So over the last few weeks, we've talked about upgrading to Windows 11, ways to get around certain requirements for Windows 11. But in all those videos, I talked multiple times about fresh installs. And what we haven't covered is how to prepare for doing a fresh install. So today we're gonna to be doing the ultimate checklist on how to prepare for a fresh Windows install, whether you're going to reinstall the same current OS and you just wanna do a nice, good, fresh install, which I typically do every one to two years, or if you're upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11, for example, this is also a really good time to do a fresh install. So the first major step is backing up your data. Now, there's a lot of data that you should back up. There's a lot of data that you don't really need to back up, but depending on how you do your installation, um, if Windows detects that there's a current Windows install on the drive that you're gonna be doing a fresh install of Windows on, it's actually gonna move all of the data from that drive into a folder called Windows Old. Now that's a super handy thing because it allows you to grab a lot of the information that I'm gonna be telling you about in a few seconds, but I don't like relying on it just in case something happens um, or it ends up accidentally you know, formatting the drive if you've made the wrong decision during the installation process. So I like to part, try to back up these before doing the installation. So the first big one is backing up your app data folder. The reason I back up the app data folder is that it contains a majority of your program's settings. So if you want those to persist into your fresh install, it is really handy to back that up and then you can move them over into your new fresh install one by one for whichever programs you want. Specifically, a big one for me is obviously OBS. When I did the fresh install of Windows 11, that was one of the folders that I particularly put a lot of attention into to make sure that everything copied over because I wanted to keep all of my scenes, um, profiles, collections, all that kind of stuff available to me when I swapped over. Next up is other folders within your users folder. Now things like your documents, your pictures, your videos, um, your music, these are all super handy. Um, the documents folder is used for a variety of things whether it's the default location for most word processors. Um, mo a lot of game saves end up being saved into the documents folder, um, things like that. So these are all really good ones to move over. The app data folder is also within the, your user folder as well. So you can kind of back up all these at once. Some programs also allow you to export their settings using a button within their interface, usually within the settings interface and it can allow you to export that and then import it later once you do ahead once you go ahead and do a reinstall this is also super handy to do and if the program supports it i highly suggest doing it even if you are going to move the app data over um, it's good to have in case that doesn't work and finally one good thing that you may want to do i don't typically do it but backing up your windows as a whole is a good idea um, in case something goes wrong during installation i don't really worry about that personally but it is a good step to take. You can either use built-in tools if you have Windows 10 or uh, the older versions, or you can use some kind of third-party tool um, to do your backup as well. Second thing I like to do is create a list of all of my installed programs. Now, if you've been using your computer for a long time, you may forget a lot of the programs you have installed, even if you do use them on a semi-regular basis or there are things that get used in the background. So creating a list of all your installed programs is extremely helpful. I typically like using a PowerShell command to create a text document that contains all of my installed programs. I will use this and then refer to it when reinstalling my programs later to ensure that I have everything that I need. But I also use this as a time to kind of cull and get rid of all of the stuff that I don't use anymore. I will leave a link down the description below that will contain the command in PowerShell for this. All you have to do is make sure that you replace the your user section with your user that you're gonna be using to back up all that stuff. And all you gotta do is just launch PowerShell and launch the tool and it'll create the text file. Third is to deactivate or unlink any license-based programs from your computer to ensure that you can go ahead and reinstall them on your new computer and use that license. Some licensing programs don't allow you to deactivate programs uh, or computers or unauthorized computers. So it's always a good idea to try to get as many of these as you can before doing the reinstall. This is also a really good time to locate all those product keys. You can use something like ProtoKey 
which is a very helpful tool in order to grab uh, the license keys or product keys from tons of applications and Windows itself as well. And that kind of leads into the fourth step, which is ensuring that you either have your Windows product key ready and available to you, or you have your Microsoft account linked to your computer and the activation is linked through your Microsoft account. It'll allow you to reinstall Windows and then use that linked license to activate Windows on the fresh install. Next, you wanna go ahead and create your installation media, whether that's gonna be using the Microsoft media creation tool or something like Rufus, which is a super easy program to use. You can go ahead and use this to create your USB stick. Um, you don't have to use CDs anymore and most people do not have a CD reader in their computer. So doing it with the USB stick is the easiest way to do so. Um, you can go ahead and use the media creation tool, which is extremely easy to go by, or Rufus, which I will walk you through the steps very quickly right now. So Rufus is a super easy tool to use. I use this to create ISO based USB sticks for a number of things, usually OS's like my Mint installs and my Windows installs. It's very easy to do. You go ahead and you select the device that you want it to use. Um, so it's already using the USB stick that I have my Windows 11 installation on. Um, then you go ahead and do the boot selection. We're gonna do disk or ISO. And then instead of select, if you want, if you already have the ISO downloaded on your computer, you can do select. If you don't, you can go ahead and do download and you can click the download and it'll go ahead and it'll allow you to choose um, your version of Windows. So we're gonna do Windows 11. You can press continue. It's gonna go ahead and download that from the internet. You can then go ahead and select your release version. Um, you can choose your edition, press continue, and it's gonna go ahead and finish that whole uh, process. Once that's done, you will see these options here. Um, it'll say the standard Windows installation. If you choose the English non-international version, I believe there's an image option to avoid the TPM. I don't know if that's changed. Um, that used to be the case, however. Um, you can go ahead and create a volume label, and then all you have to do is press start, and it'll go ahead and write that to the USB. Another thing that's not entirely necessary, but is a good idea, is to pre-download a bunch of drivers from your motherboard support website, um, and even sometimes your CPU support website, um, in order to have those drivers available. In Windows 10 and Windows 11, they're much, much better at grabbing drivers automatically for you. But I have had instances in the past when building someone's computer where for some reason Windows wasn't grabbing the LAN driver, for example, and their network adapter was unable to connect to the internet. And we had to end up using another computer, um, downloading the drivers onto a USB stick and then bringing them back over in order to get internet access. So it is a good idea to have these pre-installed and downloaded on a USB stick or an external hard drive um, and have that ready for your reinstall. And the final one is much more important if you have a ton of drives like I do, but writing down all of your drives and their drive letters is extremely handy um, and very, very useful. Biggest reason for this is if you have a bunch of programs that you're bringing over their settings for, and they're looking at particular um, paths for files, um, it's gonna be using that drive letter and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the drive keeps its same letter from before to the new install. Um, so it's very, very important to map those out and have them uh, changed. If you go ahead and you do reinstall and you need to change your drive letters, you could just use the hard disk partition manager or the disk management. So once that loads up, you can go ahead and you can find the partition that you want to change the letter for. You can right click on it. You can do change drive letter and it'll allow you to change only to one that's available. So if one is already grabbing the drive letter that you wanted to use, you have to change that drive letter first and then shape the drive letter of the one that you wanna use over. Um, it's a little bit of a lengthy process, but it is something smart to do, especially if you're bringing over those program settings. As for things to do after your fresh windows install, I have a few videos out there that talk about things to do on a new computer and those apply all really well here using things like Nine Night, ONO Shut Up 10, and other programs like that. I will have links down to all of those in the description, as well as some cards up top for that. And honestly, that's it. Those are my steps that I do almost every time I do a fresh install, whether it's for myself or for somebody else. 
and I hope that this helps you out. If it did, I'd really appreciate it if you like subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave those down in the comment section below. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, Slot Slime and Step Back, and thank you for watching this video. If you do want to see the other Windows videos that I've done in the past or any other computer related videos, you can go ahead and check out this playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Saturday.